The Alloy of Law by Brandon Sanderson is a spin-off of the Mistborn series. It is the fourth part, I guess. It takes place 300 years after the events of Mistborn and a sort of steampunk cowboy land called Skadriel or something. Yeah, it's called that. It is about Waxilium Ladrian. He is a cowboy, a sort of a law keeper of sorts. He lives in the roughs with uh, Wayne. Wayne's like his best friend, sort of his uh, Watson to his homes. And uh, then there's Lassie. She's like this sort of on and off again, love interest, sassy. And uh, however, something terrible happens to Wax and he finds himself not in the roughs anymore. Now he's living in the city and the big city um, is, you know, full of rich people and aristocrats. And he finds himself now having to reclaim the family name. He's part of the Ladrian uh, household, I guess, house Ladrian. His uncle and his cousin died, so he's really sad about that. And now he has to sort of, you know, make sure that the house has not become destitute. So he's become, you know, sort of boorish, you know, violent law keeper. He's now become an aristocratic man. So the story is that he's supposed to be doing this and uh, his old buddy Wayne shows up and says, hey, there's this group called the Vanishers and they keep uh, robbing trains blind and they keep stealing certain things and uh, Wax is trying to, you know, find himself a wife so that they can, you know, build two houses together and play off each other and become, you know, the next big, you know, power. And uh, he sort of sets his eye on a woman named Steris. She's very, shall we say, high maintenance, and her beautiful cousin, Marassi. And uh, during a dinner, however, Steris is kidnapped by the Vanishers. They show up and they want to rob everyone, but they also take hostages. So now Wax finds himself having to rescue his fiance from the Vanishers, and discovers an old enemy waiting for him. So to be completely honest, uh, this book, I had trouble getting through it. It's only 400 pages. I wanted to do like 50 pages a day and just sort of clear it in a week or so. But about three quarters of the way through, I lost interest. I didn't read for a while. I just didn't really care. A lot of people like this book. I can probably tell. Uh, I enjoyed Brandon Sanderson's Mistborn trilogy. But this novel, I don't know, it just felt kind of shallow. Um, first off, there's this weird thing where he references a lot of people. So there's like the city called Ellendale, and then there's, you know, a gun named Vindication, there's Yeoman Mansion, there's this and that. And all these little, like, Easter eggs, they feel really masturbatory, to be honest, you know, like... Like, I remember watching this YouTube video about a guy talking about things you shouldn't do when writing a screenplay. And one of them is making weird references, like, you know... You really, if you're an aspiring screenwriter and you name your high school Patty... Patty Chayefsky High, you know, something really, you know, like that. And he does that a lot in the book. There's a lot of references to, the, you know, older characters from the Mistborn trilogy, from Vin to Zazed to Kelsier to literally everyone, Lord Ruler, everyone. And they keep referencing that because this is a part of that series. I felt like this book should have, you know, tried to push itself off a bit, you know, because the ultimate sort of concept of this book is, you know, Sherlock Holmes and they have powers and they're cowboys. But you know, I really also didn't like the characters. Our main character, Wax, has um, this motivation, this haunting thing that happened to him in the opening of the book. And uh, even Brandon Sanderson himself said that a bad trope is women in refrigerators. Women in refrigerators is the trope where you motivate your main character by killing a female love interest. It is um, taken from Green Lantern. Green Lantern had a girlfriend and uh, a villain of his killed the, the Green Lantern's girlfriend and shoved her in a refrigerator as a nasty surprise for the Green Lantern. And um, something sort of similar happens to in this book. It's not 100% the same. He's not motivated by it, but it's sort of like the only character trait he has, you know? And he's a smart, you know, as a whip, deadly ace, gun shooter man, and he's got the power, he's a twin born. He's got the powers of Alamancy and Farukami, which is cool, and so is his buddy Wayne. And then Wayne has an interesting backstory, but he doesn't really have 
much of a driving force either. He's just sort of there to help out his buddy Wax. He's he's like a sidekick, and he's like not. He doesn't have his own motivation for doing anything, and he's got his cool powers of he can do like a time bubble around himself so he can change and use disguises, accents, and things like that. But he doesn't really have any motivation of his own. He just. It feels like he's just sort of there because he wants to be for fun. Like, they don't really explain that. And then there's, you know, Marassi. She's like this sort of doe-eyed, you know, oh, I studied uh, you guys and I'm a huge fan, but I'm also kind of in love with you. But, you know, she feels like a really weak, written character. She's just sort of there. And overall, honestly, the plot just didn't get me. The plot was the biggest thing. Um, basically, the Vanishers are stealing things, and Wax has to stop them, and then he does. And, you know, I honestly feel like if halfway during the book, Wax, you know, had a rock hit him in the head, and he went into a coma for the rest of the book, and, you know, it doesn't... It just it, The stakes feel relatively low this time around, you know, because... He doesn't particularly like this Steris woman, and he's like, I have to rescue her because I promised her her father. And then it's like, okay. And then and there's some interesting action set pieces. There's um, a lot uh, of stuff going on. My favorite happening near the end involving, you know, the rescue. But um, I feel like sometimes the book falls into the whole um, John Wick thing. It's something that I have a beef with in like the John Wick films. Whenever John Wick faces, you know, an assassin that's as good as he is, there's, there's a lot of suspense and tension. But whenever they have one of those set pieces where he just runs into a room and, you know, kills like 20 guys easily without breaking a sweat, that happens a lot in this book, you know. Um, being twin borns, you know, Wax and Wayne have a lot of power and combined with guns, they're pretty much unstoppable. And they, you know, shoot through like 30 guys in like one scene. And it's like, whoa, and it's awesome, but it just, it feels a little tensionless. All, but there are a few moments where they introduce some, some, you know, stronger antagonists and they're more interesting than the main characters. And, there, you know, there's a, that one action set piece near the end is the most exciting part of the book. But I, the rest of the book just kind of left me cold. I mean, there's a lot of, uh, there isn't a lot of world building really. You know, it's basically just cowboys with powers. And another thing, my biggest gripe about this book is the sort of banter between Wax and Wayne. It just feels kind of off. I, it, it almost feels like pantomime, you know? It's like grabbing two random comedic actors, putting fake mustaches and cowboy hats on them and saying, pretend this is an SNL sketch, you're in the Old West, and, and you're bickering over uh, a beautiful woman, and then, you know, a guy goes, oh, we, you know, this woman is mine. He's like, how dare you, good sir, you know? Uh, remember the time you shot that man in the ass? He's like, hey, I meant to do that. And, you know, it just it felt really like, like they were... It didn't feel, the chemistry felt like they were trying too hard. That, that's what I meant. The chemistry between the two characters, it feels like it's trying to be forced. Like they're trying to be like, hey, Wax and Wayne are huge buddies. You should believe me. See, see how much they bicker like an old couple? It's hilarious, you know? It just, there's so much of that going on and it doesn't feel like, you know, the two of them have like a backstory or, you know, like obviously they have a history together because they... They were law keepers. I'm not sure if Wayne was a law, law keeper, but he was like, a, I don't, he's like the sidekick, but I'm not really sure if he was a law keeper or not or why he's there. And there are some twists here and there. And honestly, the book falls into the trappings of, you know, oh, you know, we already solved the mystery of this book, but what if this happens and now we can have another book and we can have something else happen and why not a trilogy? And it just, it doesn't feel like there's enough story going on really. And the character development's really, you know, static. It just, uh, this, this, it just, this novel feels a little bit on the light side. And there's a lot of world building and heavy history going on in the, the original Mistborn trilogy. So in comparison, this book just feels kind of like a quick, you know, super adventure. And I guess people can be into that, but I was expecting a lot more, I guess. Maybe too high expectations. But overall, that, that's my feelings of the first book of the Wax and Wayne series, uh, The Alloy of Law.